From such a juggernaut in Ohio State, you would think more people would talk about his star in the making by the name of Trey Sermon. Slicing through is Trey Sermon. Long strides looking for the end zone. Touchdown! After three solid seasons at Oklahoma, Trey had established himself as a great running back that is about as efficient as any other running back in the entire thing. The only problem with his game was a lack of touches in a split backfield with a guy named Kenny Brooks, who's funny enough still in the Sooners. But anyways, Trey and Kenny split the backfield, and so he was able to show his talent, but not as much so as some of the best. Nonetheless, he did his thing, and after his junior year, he transferred to Ohio State to get some more recognition with the star like Justin Fields at the helm. Gus Fields looking for the deep ball. Touchdown, Ohio State, Garrett Wilson. Although only given around 120 carries, Trey produced like a madman with 870 yards and four touchdowns, which seems pretty good, but it's ridiculous when you factor in that he only played eight games. Even with the limited showcase, Trey proved his talent in the postseason with the school record 331 yards and two touchdowns. Ah! That was not a joke. Trey really did that. And not only did he just run over Northwestern, but against Clemson, he killed it once again with over 190. Although he was on an insane roll, it ended suddenly. It's a big story right there. He has been instrumental in this run. Sadly, Trey wasn't able to replicate his success against the Crimson Tide. And not only did he just get injured in the national championship, but it was on the first play, no less. <laughs> Following the injury, Trey worked tirelessly to get back to football shape. And after a solid pro day, he proved he was back. With a great showcase behind him, Trey was arguably a top five running back prospect behind some talent in guys like Najee Harris, Travis Etienne, and Javante Williams. With the 88 pick in the 2021 NFL Draft, the San Francisco 49ers select Trey Sermon. But nonetheless, with the 80th pick in the third round, Trey became a 49er with another star Trey and Trey Lance. Now that Trey is on the biggest stage in the world, I think it's time to talk about what he brings to the table. And I think it's quite a bit. From his incredible production and physicality to his solid balance and toughness, there are not too many holes in his game. All these skills were on display in his last few games, where it seemed like he was one of the best on the field every single time he laced it up. I mean, against Northwestern, Trey practically carried the Buckeyes by himself, which on its own is far from easy, but is even worse against a legit Big 12 team with guys like Greg Newsom on the other side of the ball. Anyways, Trey was on point in all the games that mattered. And because of that, he gained much more attention than he had previously. All the attention is super well deserved for someone who feels like they still have a lot to prove after splitting carries for his entire college career. But nonetheless, within the past few months, Trey has gotten his name out there. And although he hasn't given nearly the attention of some of the top stars like Najee and Travis, he has the talent to get to that level eventually. Although a new situation in the Golden State, Trey is not alone with a bunch of guys not just on offense, but in fact, a packed running back room with guys like Jarek McKinnon, Raheem Mostart, Jeff Wilson, and now Wayne Gallman in the mix. So with all the new depth at the position, it seems like Trey will have to play pretty dang well to stand out. And I think he has what it takes. I mean, as long as he does okay, he'll be fine because of play calling and talent all across the offense will elevate his play on the field. Now after talking about the situation in San Francisco, I think it's time to speculate as to what's next for Trey and the team. First and foremost, this is not a situation that guys like Najee and Michael Carter would ever face, who are likely going to head the backfield for the near future. In Trey's situation, he's going to have to climb his way up the depth chart to even get a piece of offense that is talent all across. So if or when he gets to that number one spot, he won't be a workhorse like many other running backs. Honestly, it sounds much worse than it really is, and it's not too bad of a situation, and I think it will allow him to play for much longer than otherwise. Not only will the split backfield help with his durability, but it will allow him to apply the skills he got from balancing the workload four seasons at Oklahoma and Ohio State to the big league. The fact that he works so well in a loaded offense at those powerhouses could be one of the main reasons that the 49ers wanted him in the first place. But I guess you never know. I mean, Trey is going to be a great running back wherever he goes. So I think that the fit with Shanahan will just elevate his play. Not many coaches understand how to balance an offense as well as Kyle. 
so having him in control of the team will be awesome for someone used to having to split the backfield in college. With all this in mind, I'm not expecting anything close to rookie of the year numbers out of Trey, and instead I think he'll rush for around 450 yards and around 4 touchdowns. But I think the team will do well as a whole. Even after such a rough year, I feel like the 49ers could bounce back from an injury riddled season with guys like Bosa, Jimmy G, and Kittle back in business. With the gang back together, I think the team will once again be in playoff form, but I'm not expecting anything crazy and I have them going around 10-7 and 7 in one of the toughest divisions in the league. I'm sure they'd be pretty happy with it following a 6-10 and 10 year, but I don't think it's the end of something, I really think it's the beginning of their rise back to the top of the NFC. Trey Sermon has made his way to the Golden Coast as a San Francisco 49er, and I for one am excited to see what's in store. A monster game a week ago, and he's got the ball, and he's got a big game on first down, turns the edge, and he's down the sideline. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed, it would be awesome if you could subscribe, like, and comment below what you guys think of Trey. But anyway, see you guys soon, and peace out.